lying on the ground. This way, this way, this way. In the winter of 2002, more strontium was removed from a village called Leo. Three woodcutters were severely injured. Georgia has also been a pipeline for the international transport of dangerous materials. In December of 2001, an Armenian man was arrested carrying uranium that apparently had come from a nuclear power plant in Armenia. I wanted to sell each container for $7,000, the man told a television reporter. During our investigation in Tbilisi, we were told you could buy enough cesium to make a dirty bomb for $10,000. This woman, Georgia's former environmental minister, has also heard reports that cesium is for sale. Nino Chubadze said she's concerned because it would take only this much to make a dirty bomb. She told us that most of the radioactive material from Soviet days has been recovered, but she also knows that some is still missing. Everything that was recovered can be used to create dirty bombs. Terrorism has no borders, and it is practically impossible to fight against it if the country is not organized. The Georgian government insists it has safely stored all the cesium it's found, but we learned that security is rather lax. There are 200 canisters stored at this facility. Again, we feel it's best not to report where it is. The canisters were sealed, but the radiation level was 80 times higher than outside the building. In front of the building, we saw just one guard with an automatic weapon. There are no guards behind the facility. Just a wall, a wire fence, and no security cameras. Sasha Gorevich, a former Georgian TV journalist, showed us that the crumbling wall is not secure enough to keep out intruders. So I went over the wall, walked up a li little hill, looked around, there was no security, so I felt safe. I continued going, I saw the facility, it's about 150 meters from the wall. I walked right to it, it was about 10 meters away from me. Um, there was no security around, nobody was walking around. There was only one rusty lock on the gate, and there was a huge sign of radioactivity on the gate. Turned around came back, crawled through the wall. Government tells us that police should be here in case of trespassing within two or three minutes. Nobody's here, I'm standing here for the last 10 minutes now. Um, there is no big gate, there is one little gate and one lock on the, on the gate. President Sakasvili told us he needs more money to upgrade security at facilities like this one. And the United States is trying to help. American money will pay for a new building to store Russian radioactive material at this military base near Tbilisi. The American military is also trying to help by training the soldiers at this army base near the capital. From what we saw, they need a few more lessons. U.S. military assistance to Georgia is expected to keep increasing. Georgia, in truth, has been getting so much help from the United States that some hardline Russians have been calling President Saakashvili an American spy. Nonsense, he says. But when we talked in New York, he did not hide his affection for the United States. I sometimes miss the United States. I miss New York. I love New York. And when I come here, it's, it's, it is very uh, you know, sentimental and nostalgic for me. Sakasvili lived in New York for a while and graduated from Columbia Law School in 1994. His plan back then was to be a big-time lawyer in New York. How did you get from there to where you are now, being president? Well, you know, I had the, I had the choice to make, and the choice was to become a lawyer at a Manhattan law firm. But the point was that I came from the country where, um, where at that time, uh, there was civil war, it was ravaged by poverty, it was ravaged by, you know, despair. People and the country was run, the president said, by corrupt politicians and mafia-style gangsters. I mean, they uh, um, stole Georgia's natural riches, they stole our taxes, they stole the foreign assistance that, that came to Georgia. Sakasvili decided to return to Georgia, start a reform party, and run against the corrupt regime of former President Edward Shevardnadze. After a contested election, Sakasvili took over and almost immediately began cracking down on corruption. He fired the hated traffic police, who 
who had hassled and shaken down drivers for years, making more in bribes than wages. He hired a brand new force. We basically managed to crack down on corruption and to basically to eliminate the issue of corruption, to tackle the issue of corruption in our security service, and this was very important. But the president knows it's only a first step. Corruption and bribery have been a problem in Georgia. How concerned should we be about that, that someone could buy some of these radioactive materials or steal them? I think our security service is much more efficient at this point, but of course, there still could be something out there that's not fully under control. I want to make sure I understand, you're getting there or you're there in terms of protection and safety of these? Well, I, I think we are getting there, but we are not there yet. Because we need to have much more efficient system that no, nothing like this could happen.